Okay, usually on my channel I show you all the nitty-gritty of how I struggle to get it to work, but I decided to spare you that this time. <laughs> anyway, so here's our glass bed. I'm going to show you how I clean it after a print, so it's ready for the next one. Here's our tray that we use. It's a metal tray. It's an old uh, cookie dip, cookie tray. I put a, a nice soft uh, t-shirt remnant on top. This is a tie-dye t-shirt. And so the metal tray helps uh, absorb uh, heat and also conducts heat away when we're trying to cool it down. So, um, so we're going to go ahead and clean this. So you, you, do, you don't want to touch the glass bed with your fingers. It's, I've just touched it on the edges, right? So I'm going to use these rubber gloves to wash it. And uh, I'll show you how to do that. And then I'll show you how I dry it and get it ready to go on the print bed. Okay, so the glass is at room temperature. So we want to heat it up. I mean, it's borosilicate glass, so it can handle big temperature swings. We, we, no reason to stress it more than we need to. So I just put it under the uh, sink so it's lukewarm. So it has to warm up because the water has to come from the uh, water heater. So it's, not, it's lukewarm now. So I, I take some of my Dawn dishwashing liquid. Dawn is well known in the uh, telescope industry for cleaning optics. So I figured it would be good for this. Nice and gentle. Put a little bit of soap on it. And then just rub it around with your gloves. I'm using these gloves because I don't want to put any oil on the on the uh, glass for my fingers. Also, these Playtex gloves are sensitive enough that I, if there's any residual left from the previous print, I can, uh, once the soap's on, it easily comes off with this uh, paint scraper. So I'm not feeling anything, so we had a nice clean print last time. Then we got to get all the soap off, so... First thing I do is turn it back on, and then I, I rinse the top side. This is the side I'm going to use to print on. And I flip it over, then I rinse off my gloves. Make sure I get all the soap off my gloves. Then I rinse the bottom, then I rinse the top again, and I rinse the bottom, and then I rinse the top one more time. So all the soap should be off of here now. So turn it off, hold it at an angle to get off most of the water. You can shake a little bit. Don't want to drop it, obviously. I put on a, on a paper, clean paper towel that's on a uh, uh, regular towel to absorb all the moisture. They get rid of these gloves because they have water on them, so you can't really use these gloves to dry them off. So now I got to start touching my finger, but I only touch the edges. See, tip it up on one edge, another clean paper cloth. So my particular glass makes a squeaky sound like it's nice and clean when I clean this side. So that's always encouraging. Backside doesn't seem to do it as much. So far, as far as I know, I'm only printing on this one side. So, um, could print on both sides, alternate or something, but it's working for me, so I'm just sticking with one side for now. If this side gets really scratched up, I can use the other side, I guess. So that's got a, most of the water off, and to get the rest of it off, I just use another dry, clean paper towel. I'm re reusing these, I'm not uh, throwing away after each use, because this is super clean already. It's just getting the water off, really. Then I hold it in the light and see if there's any residual. There's some water down over here, so I gotta get that off. I'll take another one. It could be on the back. It's hard to tell. There was a little bit of water on that one side. I'm not seeing any filament remnants, which is what I'm really looking for. All right, so put it back on our tray. This is our safe way to carry it around, right? It's not. We're not going to drop it. We're not touching it. So this is a safe way to move it from one place to another. So I'll move it out in the garage, and then I'll show you how I prepare it for printing. All right, so we're going to be using uh, the standard, which other people have recommended, which is this purple Aquanet. Found this at Safeway. Uh, it's unscented. It still has a little bit of a scent, so I try to spray it outside, which I'll show you in a second. I, if it's at night, I do spray it in the garage here and just hold my breath. So I made this easel out of a cardboard box. So I took a cardboard box. This is one of the corners of the box here. Folded it in this easel shape and then folded up. This is another side of it. I folded it up and made a little, a little stop here. I'll show you how that works in a minute. And then I put some corner pieces on it to keep it at a 40, 90 degree angle. This is, I would say this is essential. For me anyway, it's essential. So the way I put it in there is I put it backwards like this. Lift this up. Only touching the edges. Slide it in. So now it's in there. 
So we get this back around. So now, um, the way this, this stop works, the, the edges of the glass, this back edge of the glass here goes slightly underneath this stop, so it just holds it there. So when I'm moving it around, it's super solid. So now we're gonna take it outside and we're gonna spray this and I'll show you how to do that. I'm out here on the compost bin. You can see this in some of my other videos about composting. I have the truth, the, the truth about home composting. So you might wanna check out that video. Anyway, so I've tried different methods. I did try printing without Aquanet and it didn't have a very poor adhesion. So I decided to go with this. So I did, I did do three passes, but I see now he's getting too much. So I just do two passes now, one on the top half, one on the bottom half. So you want to start to the left of the glass and then fit it, and then don't release the nozzle until you're past it on the right. It's like painting with uh, spray paints. It's the same idea. So you start over here. Just make a nice smooth pass across and then you've got a nice smooth layer of uh, Aquanet on here. So I'll take it back inside and I'll show you how I put it in the machine. So I've got my printer already printing and heating up. I found I could, since I'm only printing the print bed to 55 degrees, I can touch that with my fingers and not feel like I'm burning myself. And the extruder is 225, so it's already preheated. So I already did a print a little while ago. So I'm, I kept it, I kept the, Particularly the printhead, you want to keep that heated all, all the time you're running because uh, anytime you let it go down to room temperature, it's going to have more likely to clog because there is still some filament left in there even after you clean it. So I try to keep it, keep it hot uh, as long as I'm printing. So. All right, so now we've got our, our uh, glass bed with the, uh, make sure the door is open. Yeah. Glass bed with the uh, Aquanet on it. So I, I pull it away like this because the, the, the side that was under the little uh, stop is going to be the back edge where I'm not printing there. So I don't care if there's no Aquanet on it. So you put it in the machine carefully. Then I'll, uh, I'll set up the camera so you can see how I put in the, the binder clips. All right, so the glass is on the bed. The glass is slightly smaller than the uh, print surface. So. So this is the same, but either the print surface is slightly bigger or this is slightly smaller. So I use three binder clips. So these are one inch binder clips. I tried different sizes. This one seems to work the best. It's about the width of my thumb, which is one inch. And you gotta be careful where you put them on the bed because number one, you're doing leveling. So if you have a binder clip where the, the head is gonna move when it's leveling, uh, it's gonna run into it. So that's not good. So. So the places I found that work effectively is on the front. So again, I'm not I'm making sure I don't touch the surface. So I, I'm gonna do a white move across the front of this uh, glass. I wanna make sure the glass is up against the front of the print bed. This means there's a gap back here and back, but I don't care because I'm not printing back there. And I also want it to be against this edge because I do a white move on the right left side here. So the first one you wanna put about um, a little bit less than one binder clip's width from the front. So this is a little bit less than one binder clip. It's about three quarters of a binder clip from here. Now on the back here, you've got to worry when you do when the flash forge does a, uh, a leveling, it moves past this corner. So if you put this binder clip too close to this corner, it's going to run into it. So I found a full binder clip width to the left of this back corner is a good place to be. Because you've also got to worry about when it's doing the, the leveling, it comes back over to this area to do the le last level position or before it gets to the middle. So it does one in front, one back left corner, one back right corner. So you've got to make sure this binder clip isn't going to be in the way of that. So we've got two places contact. We want three places to make it solid. So the third one we put back in this back left corner on the side is a there's a uh, a, a little bolt a little uh, yeah it's a bolt that comes out the bottom of the print bed uh, that screws that connects the aluminum print aluminum uh, print bed to the heating uh, PCB board underneath it. So I'm going to put this clip so that is butted up against the. Uh, that bolt, so as back, far back as possible along this back, along this uh, left side. 
Because I want to do a white move on this side. That gives me as much room as I can to do a white move over here as part of my print. All right, so there we go. That's our binder clip position. That was figured out by <coughs> figured out by the School of Hard Knocks, let's say. So then we're going to check our bit temperature. So. so it's about 49 degrees. So normally we print. So I've got the the bed temperature setting on the machine to 55 but because there's a heat gradient there's a gradient of uh, temperature gradient between the metal bed the metal the aluminum print bed the the blue uh, print surface we're not using right now and then the glass so there's a temperature gradient of about six degrees so this this seems to give good adhesion without sticking too much so i've I was running hotter for a while. I was up about 52, 53, and I had to, it was adhering too well to the um, uh, surface. My, my prints were adhering too well, so that, that I stopped doing that. All right, so now we're ready to do leveling. So we're going to use our our uh, index card. Like we're, I'm most familiar with this, so this is what I like to use. So I'm going to turn on leveling. So we hold the, it's ready to go. We got the filament ready to go to load afterwards. So first we level, then we load the filament. So keep an eye on that back right corner. You'll see that it just misses, the printhead just misses that binder clip. Here's our first leveling. So what I found is, because we're using 0.12 millimeter layers, that, well, I didn't say that before either. I tried different layer layer uh, thicknesses, and 0.12 worked for me with a 0.2 millimeter nozzle. So, so what I found for leveling is you need to back off the the tightness of this until it has some friction. But then when you tighten it up, you want to just hear a little bump. I probably can't hear that, but there's a little teeny bump. When I pull this paper out, that the the surface rebounds and hits the uh, hits the end of the nozzle, but then re 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 recoils, so that's actually a little bit away from it. So, so we'll try the back left corner. So again, we, we're missing we're missing the leveling here by having this binder clip here. So. Last position is in the middle, and, we, and when we we're going to put the paper there, but we're not going to pull on it because we don't want to mess up the the adhesive in the middle. So I'm just going to let it go to the middle and then say finish and it'll drop away because it's heavier. So the, the, because you have the glass bit on here, it's, it's heavier than it normally is so it drops away. All right, so now we're ready to load our filament. Nothing new about that, just the regular loading procedure that's built into the machine. So I'll go ahead and do that and then we'll get our print started and I'll show you how I'm printing. So Main thing, as I found, is I only print in the middle of the glass bed. But once it started working, I said, oh boy, it's working. Let's print as many as we can. So I spread it out all over the glass bed, missing these binder clips. But after a few hours of printing, the 0.2 millimeter nozzle just couldn't, couldn't keep going without being cleaned. So I had a bunch of failed prints where I would print for four or five hours, and then all of a sudden it stopped extruding, and then the whole print was ruined. So you got to keep your prints short enough that you can, I would say, more, no more than five and a half hours, at least for the filaments I'm using, uh, so that you can clean out the filament, clean out the print head, and then go on to the next print. So you have to print less, fewer or less than you're doing. You might want to do otherwise, but for what I'm doing, that I, I, I can make that work. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Post a comment if you have any questions or ideas, and I'll try to respond. That's all for now, but more videos are coming, and if you want to see them, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification icon if you don't want to miss one. This is Beta Signy signing out, and keep looking up.